that one. From a side. Down. Right, after my little tumble yesterday when I was out on my my little tow rag, my pretty Touareg 660. Um, yeah, it's got a little bit of damage from it and uh, I just want to investigate whether it's permanent or whether it's something I can fix now or whether uh, um, it's something I might have to get uh, some help with from a dealership and stuff like that. Uh, so what is the main extent of the damage? Well, let's have a look, shall we? The thing I'm most concerned with is the handlebars. Right, so you are looking from roughly where I am looking um, when I'm on the bike. And if we go down here, the handlebars don't look too bad. Um, but let's just try and do it. I don't know if the GoPro will pick it out. I'm hoping it can. But if you see the ends of the forks where the adjusters are, you can see on one side, on the right hand side, you can see more of the adjuster than you can on the left hand side. So this little bit here and this little bit here, if I try and keep square with the bars, I'm not doing a very good job of this square with the bars malarkey. These cameras have got such a fish eye on them, even on linear. Um, but I can see it on the screen, so I'm hoping you can. That there's a lot less of that showing than there is of that one. Which means that this bar here, or this riser here, is, um, is bent. Another telltale is... Um, so if you look down at the, uh, the steering triple tree top yoke down there, and compare it with the line along here of this. You can see there's an angle on that as well. But to me, that is quite obvious. There is a twist there. And it, with that twist there, that to me suggests that the uh, bar risers are twisted or bent. Now, as I look forward on the bike, um, ignoring the bars at the moment for just looking straight in line with the tank uh, the cockpit is skewed off to the, the left there a little bit now mine has been like that from new um, I did mention it to my dealership when I took it in for the first service the 500 or 600 mile service whatever it was um, and they had a look but they, they couldn't see what was causing it um, on the forums at the time when I mentioned it back then other people had mentioned it as well so it is a common thing that um, and I'm guessing it's all the tolerances in all the bolts that hold it all together allow it to be twisted one way or the other um, and I imagine it would be quite a serious dissection to get it stripped down and uh, everything put on in a straight manner it might also be something to do with us being English and on the left hand side of the road and they might have tilted it that way intentionally, I don't know, but that would seem a little odd that would seem a little odd indeed when they could have just tilted the headlight <laughs> um, because it does look weird but I'm not concerned about that because it's always done that and that's something that I'm hoping a pretty will be able to sort out now something I noticed on the way home from the ride yesterday while looking at the bike and I don't know whether it's because of that skewing my view kind of perspective um, but the top triple tree does also look like it's slightly twisted um, and if that's the case that I think will be an easy fix all I have to do is slacken off all the bolts on the suspension and give it all a little wiggle and then tighten them back up to the correct torques so that I can do I know I can do that right sitting on the bike and talking to you lot isn't getting this investigated um, so first thing I'm going to do is try and slacken off the uh, suspension and then give it a wiggle and uh, I'm not going to be able to test that until I take the bike out but um, it, it, it won't do any harm to do that so I'm going to do that first so what I'm going to be doing is slacking off these two here these two here these two here and these two here then with that all slackened off I shall uh, put my knees here like this and grab the bars and just give the whole lot a little wiggle left and right a little bit and uh, then uh, hopefully just tighten up and I'm hoping I'm hoping that that will sort out the little twist that I think there is in relation to the top yoke and the bottom yoke it might be in my head there might not be anything there but that certainly won't hurt to do that so these are just a six mil allen key
to do this safely you really need the bike on a center stand so um if you don't have a center stand chop the bike up because you don't want it dropping on the suspension I've no idea if that's enough, but it's what it is. That might work. That might work. Now, for those of you who are better spanners than I am, try doing it with a camera in your hand. Okay, now I've not talked these up yet, I'll do that in a second, um, but you get the gist. So you just slacken them off, give the bars a wiggle with the wheels jammed between your, your knees, and then turn it all back up again. That's how I used to straighten everything up on my old KTM when I had that. Another top tip is preheat your mugs when you're working outside, fill them up with boiling water, then uh, when you reboil the kettle, make your brew, and uh, your cup stays hot for longer. Top tip. Okay, so that's uh, that bit done. Um, yeah, I can't do anything more but test that on a road test, which I'll have a go at um, in a bit. Although I think it's actually trying to snow. Brilliant. It's raining at the moment, but I'm sure we've had some snowflakes. Plenty of snowflakes in the world, isn't there? Um, as you can see, a bit of scratch work to the plastic there. It's just cosmetic, not really concerned about that. Um, obviously, I don't want my pretty bike getting damaged, but it's a trail bike. They uh, have a rough and tumble. I don't think the plastics on these are too expensive. Um, because on the red and black, most of the plastic is um, the colour of the plastic rather than painted or anything like that. Uh, but I don't think that's the case with these silver infills. I might be wrong. Um, but yeah, you can see underneath it's a, there's a different colour under there. So um, they're probably the more expensive plastics to replace. So sod's law, they're the ones that are damaged. <laughs> so this is when I went down the second time yesterday. This is where I went into the sort of fence and shrubs. Um, yeah, on my, on my second little spill, which wasn't a very fast one. Uh, I did actually kind of almost get my legs stuck under the bike. I did try getting it out, but um, you know, you, sometimes you can't in time anyway. A few scuffs and scrapes to the handguard protection, that's what they're there for. This side um, fared fine, didn't have any problems with, the, with the, the drop, but it did go down a lot gentler. So there's no real damage to the plastics up here, maybe a little scratch there. Um, yeah, nothing really to write home about up here. Crash protection, haven't really got any noticeable marks on it. Um, that might be a, a scratch there through the paint, so I might need to touch that up at some point. Um, the SW Motec sump took some of the impact, um, but there's no damage to that, which is cool, shows how tough that is. Uh, yeah, and uh, the foot pegs and brake lever on this side, that didn't snap off. Apparently these pins on this side and also on the other side for the gear lever, they're a weak point. A lot of people have reported them snapping, um, but I don't know whether I'm lucky whether my Bikes protection, the SW Motec and um, a pretty engine guard combination is enough to protect it. The SW Motec sump guard does stick out a little bit there, so that's possibly protected that. Um, but yeah, I've not had any issues um, with that reported weakness. And it is a design 
intent. <laughs> it's a snap point, it's designed to break rather than the lever. Um, but yeah, I can see why people get annoyed if it leaves them stranded out, out on a trail or a ride or something. Oh. The exhaust pipe did go down and did dig in a little bit, um, but because it is a good quality part, no damage to that that I can see. It might be a little bit of a push in of the metal there, but nothing, nothing untoward really. Um, yeah, in all, I think I got off quite lightly because it did go down quite hard. Um, but now to investigate further on these handlebars and top yokes and uh, um, bar risers and stuff like that. I don't know how this disassembles, um, so I'm going to take off what I can and see what we've got. Okay, the camera's not really going to be able to pick it up without me turning it upside down, so excuse me if you go inverted. I don't know if you can see, but in there is a bolt and a nut that holds this on. I was really hoping that it would screw in from the top and I could take the whole lot off and um, uh, remove the bar riser from above but it looks like I can't do that let's get you the right way up um, yeah I was hoping that I could just take all this off and then take the bar riser off from the top um, but I don't think I can I might be able to get a spanner in there and then undo it from the top by winding it off um, but I don't know if these are sort of captive whether they've got a, a wedge to hold them in and keep them keep them straight ahead or something like that. I honestly I don't know. Yeah, the only thing I think I can do here is either take the whole top yoke off, which means slacking off these again, um, taking off this nut, and then I can lift that up and then get access to the underneath of these, or I might be able to get a socket in underneath and uh, slacking it off. But I don't know what good that'll do. It looks like they're rubber mounted. That looks like rubber. Um, so it might not even be bent. It might, like the forks, might just need slackening off and then uh, retightening. Don't know. That'd be good if that's the case. Um, yeah, that would be good. But I bet it's not. I bet it's not gonna be that easy. Right, I'm gonna have a fiddle without the camera in my hand to see if I can get to any of this without dissecting the whole bike. Um, and if I can do something, I'll show you either what I've done or how I do it. Right, okay, so I've got the top yoke off. I've wedged the bike up, so there's no weight on the front there. Yeah, so I've got the top yoke off. And uh, as you can see, you've got those bolts underneath which what I'm going to do is I'm going to slacken it right off, take it off, just investigate it and see if I can see any obvious bends in it. Um, and then what I'm probably going to do is put it back on and just hope that reseating it recenters it um, if I can't see any damage to it. Yeah, it's all a bit of fiddle doing all this, especially with the camera. So um, it's why I'm not doing it on camera. So I'm sorry I'm not showing you exactly what I'm doing, but you can kind of get the gist. I've already explained how I got the top yoke off. So I'm doing the uh, fork clamp and uh, taking off the center nut there. Um, and when I put it all back together again, obviously talking it all down. Right, so I have got this bit off the top of that. Annoyingly, might not have needed to take the uh, top yoke off um, because what I have done is I have loosened that And then this started spinning on the top. Um, so now putting it back on again means I've got to wind it back onto here, which goes down through there. Um, yeah, so I've got to screw it back on there. Sorry, the GoPro just died. It said I had low battery, but there was 66% remaining. Wonderful, wonderful GoPro, thank you. <laughs> this is my GoPro Hero 9, by the way. Um, my 10's absolutely fine. Um, but yeah, so I've got to uh, screw this back on to this and then tighten it up at the bottom as well. Um, I mean, as you can see, it wobbles around quite a bit. And I'm just wondering if that's enough 
I mean, obviously it doesn't wobble around when it's tight, but it's got movement there. And I'm wondering if that movement is enough to make it uh, appear that the bars are bent. Um, but I'm hoping that now I've slackened it all off and, um, and now putting it all back together again, that it is, uh, is better, is better. <laughs> the annoying thing with having loosened this means that when I tighten down the uh, the bar riser onto this it's, it's going to not be pointing in the right direction necessarily so I've got to put the bars together with them off the forks so I can tighten it all down then I've got to take it the bars off <laughs> So I can put it back on the forks to tighten down this nut, which is an Allen, Allen key to tighten that up. And the only Allen key I've got is too big to fit under the bars. So yeah, it's a bit of a faff, bit of a faff. Um, yeah, annoying. Right, well that is the bars all back together. Um, with the top yoke done up, everything torqued down and all that sort of stuff. Uh, ease, a successful day. Let me show you on the bike. Right, so I don't know how well it showed up before, um, but let's just see if I can show you now. So I've got pretty much bar straight ahead, and uh, if we just peek over the top there. So, I don't know if you can see that there. They almost look completely parallel with each other, don't they? Um, I think there is a slight bit out, but tiny, tiny. Um, and if we go back a little bit and uh, let's go back up so you can see both I don't know if you can just see the tips of the suspension adjusters in front of the bars there um, over there and over there they look showing the same amount as well um, so uh, I don't think I bent the bars which is good saves me some money um, although it does mean that me getting the Yamaha T7 bars on this has got a, a stay of execution. I will look into doing that at some point um, because I, I I just need to really for my, my personal comfort on the bike because um, yeah I've got a rotator cuff injury and these are just, just a little bit too wide for me. A little bit too wide for me and a little bit too tall even when I'm standing up. So um, yeah swapping the bars over would be a good plan for me, not necessarily for you. Um, but yeah, these seem to be straight. Um, obviously I did the uh, loosening off of the uh, top and bottom yoke there to uh, give the, the forks a wiggle um, and I don't know if that's done anything or not. I don't even know if I needed to. It might have been just in my head. Um, but we'll see next time I go out for a test ride uh, or, a, or, or just a spin on the bike. Um, but yeah, productive morning. I have no idea what time it is. No idea how long I've been playing with the bike. Um, a lot of dissection to do uh, not a lot but it's important to have your bars in the right direction I think um, especially with how far out they would actually made themselves noisy bloody delivery drivers Grr, barg. I'm a happy chappy I'm a happy chappy we have a straight bike again nice well I'd say that has been a successful spanner in session um, the bars seem straight now uh, I need to ride it just to see if the yokes are, are in line um, but I think they are um, I think it was possibly either in my head or what I've done there would have sorted that anyway um, yeah I mean the bike takes a battering out on the lanes out on the trails uh, partly just getting scraped and scratched as you go through shrubs and things like that um, and with your tumble you've got to expect um, to to have a little bit of, of damage to the bike. Uh, I love this bike, I love it. It's it's all I want from a motorcycle really in the genre that this bike is. A middleweight adventure bike that I can take off on the trails and uh, not really be held up very much. Um, I, I do get stuck occasionally. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good trail bike and it gets me between the lanes very nicely as well. And you can do some touring on it quite seriously. Um, it's just these tyres. These tyres are the limiting factor on the tarmac. I've actually got a new tyre for the front coming. Um, this one is still legal. We'll keep it on for a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, I've got another tyre to go on there. Uh, I've stuck with Motos, uh, but instead of going with the Adventure like I've got on here, I've got a Motos Rally, um, the, the Traction Agent Rally. 
or rallies or whatever it is, oh, weird names, um, to put on there. Uh, just thought I'd give it a go. The rear's got loads and loads of life left on it, so I don't need to worry about that just yet. Um, so yeah, I imagine that tyre change will give me another years of uh, riding without needing to worry about rubber. This thing here, SW Motec Sump Guard, that's just been fantastic, no damage whatsoever. A bit fiddly to fit, but uh, yeah, it's solid, solid. Um, so I'm well chuffed with that. And the crash bars, they, they are proving their worth, certainly after that last little tumble. Anyhow, we are just about at the end of this video, so if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you can give it a little thumbs down. I don't mind at all. But please do drop in a comment. Let me know if you've had any rough and tumble incidents with your bike, whether you fixed them or whether you've had to replace parts and stuff like that. Have you uh, had the uh, infamous uh, pivot um, bolt snap um, for your brake or clutch lever? Um, there's eight pages of that on one of the forums I follow <laughs> of just talking about a snap bolt. Um, so I'm guessing it's quite common with you. I've been very lucky. I, I'm hoping I stay lucky. Uh, but I do need to look into um, maybe carrying a solution in case I do have that issue out on the trails because, uh, yeah, it could leave you stranded. So I do get why people are getting upset about it. Um, but I think it's an easy fix. It's an easy fix. You've just got to prep yourself and, and be ready to do that. Any hazards? All right, I guess that's it. So, uh, yeah, you ride safe, take care, and I shall catch you all in the next one. Uh, bye bye for now. Keep that bar open, don't rub us off. Down. Hey, yeah, you no, know, you gotta keep that bar. Rub us off. Down.